Welcome to Cooking with Mario. I'm Mario Goichai, chef and owner of Mr. G's Chop House located in Shelby Township. We're at 56129 Van Dyke. That's just on the west side of the road, just south of 26 Mile. Uh, today on Cooking with Mario, we're gonna be making a grilled cheese, actually two ways, one for the kids and one for the adults. And we're also gonna be pairing that with a tomato soup. So let's get cooking. For the tomato soup, we have our tomato sauce and all of our seasonings here. We have onion powder, garlic powder, bay leaf, oregano, salt, pepper, chili flakes, garlic, onion, celery, carrot, finishing it with heavy cream. And for our grilled cheese, we have a couple different cheeses here, American cheese, Swiss and Gruyere, white bread, butter, and tomato and spinach. All right, so for the tomato soup that we're making today, we're gonna start off with a base that essentially almost every soup that you'll ever make is gonna have. So that's onion, carrot, celery. Uh, I do like a lot of carrot in my soups because it gives out a nice sweetness to it. Um, the celery just gives it the nice aromatic. Same thing with the onion, it gives it a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of depth. So we're just gonna chop this up. Um, this is gonna go into the pot with a little bit of olive oil and we're essentially just gonna caramelize it a little bit. And as soon as that gets a little bit of caramelization on there, then we're gonna start adding the rest of our ingredients. So, for the soup, you don't need this to be finely chopped because we're gonna use a blender at the end to blend the soup and make it really nice and creamy. And we're gonna finish it with a little bit of heavy cream as well for a nice texture, smooth, velvety, all right? So I have my chopped up veg. We're gonna pop this into this uh, pot over here. A little bit of olive oil. All right, about a tablespoon worth. Okay, now while that's going, I also like to add all of my seasoning and aromatics because it just kind of blooms. So by bloom, I mean things open up. So you might have a little bit of uh, essential oils left in this oregano and this bay leaf. So, you know, we're gonna kind of cook that out, bring out the aromas. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of oregano here. You know, we're doing about a four quart portion. Um, I mean, you, you got about a good, you know, eight cups of soup um, for, for whoever you're feeding. So here we go. We're gonna add some oregano here, about a tablespoon, bay leaves, Gonna have that really nice smell to it. A Couple of bay leaves go a long way. Chili flakes, now this depends on how, you know, how spicy you like it. If you don't even wanna taste any spice, obviously you can leave it out, but I like to put a little bit, not for the spice, but it actually releases a little bit of sweetness, um, like a sweet pepper flavor. So I'm just gonna put a little bit here, just a pinch, maybe a teaspoon we'll call it. All right, and then, I got a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, about a tablespoon of each for this four quart recipe. Okay, and then a little bit of fresh garlic as well. We'll do about a tablespoon of fresh garlic here. Okay. It's gonna give this a stir. Make sure that we get all of our carrot, onion, and celery kind of cooked on all sides. Help the cooking process move along a little bit. Okay, crank this heat up. I had it on kind of low. All right, you can hear that simmering away now. So we're gonna let that go for just a couple minutes, get some nice color on it, kind of help those onions get nice and soft and translucent. Um, now we're gonna start working on kind of the main event, what's gonna go with it. So. My kids are super picky. I think a lot of kids are super picky. So we're gonna make a simple grilled cheese sandwich. Um, for the kids, we're just gonna stick with regular American cheese. For the adults, you know, we're gonna kick it up a little bit. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, Swiss and Gruyere. You can use whatever you like. If you like mozzarella or whatever you want, I mean, get, get creative with it. So what we're gonna do here, I like to lather up the bread really good. So we're gonna get a nice even coat on this bread here. Make sure it gets to all the edges. You don't really want a dry spot. Okay. 
The reason I like to get all the edges is just so that it has the same texture. So if you bite here, it's going to have the same crunch as if you bite here. And obviously the good flavor of the butter. So we're going to lather this up really nice. Okay. Nice. I'm going to get a pan going, get this pan hot. And that's where we're going to put our grilled cheese on. So I got it on about medium high. You know, we don't want to burn it up. I'm going to do another, another slice. I'm just going to prepare it. So when I do start putting this in the pan, I'll be ready to build it in the pan. I don't really put anything in the pan. You don't have to put any oil or anything in the pan because we got such a good amount of butter on this bread here. So it's not going to stick. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. All right. So now we probably got about 10 seconds for that pan to heat up. Check on my veg. Starting to get some color here. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add the tomato sauce. The tomato sauce is not seasoned. That's why we seasoned ahead of time. So we're going to add this tomato sauce in. It's right out of the can. Um, it's a little bit thick, so then I'm going to thin it out with a little bit of water because as it's cooking, it's going to reduce also. So we're going to do that now. So now here I'm adding the tomato sauce. Okay. So I had about three quarts of tomato sauce and I'm adding about a quart of water here. Why waste it, right? Put the water in here, get all that extra sauce out. Okay. And then as it's cooking down, like I said, it's going to reduce. If you need to add a little bit more water to thin it out and get it to the consistency, which you like, add a little bit more water. So now that's working. I'm actually going to push this to the back of the stove and bring up the grilled cheese to the front here. So we can see, see what's going on. Okay. Just giving a little test, see how hot the pan is. Yep, it's getting there. So, okay. So we're going to put down our first piece. Hear that nice sizzle? We're going to get a couple pieces of this cheese here. Layer it right in. Okay. And the other one right on top. We're just cooking homey, simple, good, make the family happy kind of a meal right now. Okay. So obviously butter can burn. So you want to watch it. Just flip it up on the corner, see if it's getting a nice caramelization crust. You know how you like it. I like mine to be pretty nice and golden brown. Have a nice crisp. Make sure that the cheese is melted inside. That's very important to me. Okay. Probably getting really close here. Okay, it's getting some nice light color on it. Maybe another minute. While that's working, I'm going to do another one for the adults. You know, we're going to feed the kids first. Get those guys out of the way. Here we go. All right. So same thing. Lather it up. Okay. All the way to the edges. Both pieces. And you can get super creative of what you put inside. Um, I've done so many of these. I love grilled cheese sandwiches. You know, if you want to go vegetarian, all veggies. Today we're doing uh, tomato and spinach, but I also like to, you know, put a little bit of ham in mine or a little bit of prosciutto. Tastes really good. Experiment with different cheeses, whatever you like. Okay. Now that's the color I'm looking for. So we're going to give this a quick flip. Okay. There we go. Lowering down the heat a little bit, but this is looking really good. So the first side took a, maybe about two minutes. This side, the pan was a little bit hotter. So always, you know, keep an eye on what your pan is doing. You can see the butter's browning a little bit, which means that, you know, if you left it on there too long, it could potentially start to burn. But, you know, we're keeping a good eye on it. You can see the cheese is starting to melt around the edges. And this happens fairly quickly. So really easy, really quick breakfast or lunch or whatever you want to do for the kids. It's a great meal. I'm going to give this a flip. 
Looks nice. All right. We're going to pull this one off. That one's done, okay? It's going to wipe this pan out just to get rid of that old butter that was in there. And we're going to start fresh with the new one, okay? So here we go. This one's going to be for the adults. So we're going a little bit, you know, just a little bit extra on it. We're going to use both cheeses. So we have a Swiss Gruyere and American. We're going to put some tomato on there. If you like, you can grill the tomato ahead of time. Uh, we're also going to do some spinach, which all of this is going to wilt and get warm and nice. Um, it's going to give it some nice moisture. Um, and that'll all stay nice in the sandwich and it will be nice and warm. So here we go. Okay, another one, really hot. You can hear it. You can see the sizzle, the smoke. Okay, a little Gruyere, a little Swiss, a little extra American. All right, we're going to lay that right in here. It's one of my favorites. Put some tomato, hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper, get some good seasoning there. And then we're just going to put this spinach. Don't worry about the spinach being raw. You don't have to cook it ahead of time. The residual heat will help it wilt, okay? So now we're going to top it off with our last piece of bread here, okay? You can always give it a little press just to kind of ensure all that stuff stays inside, okay? And then just like the first one, we're going to watch it so it doesn't burn. Make sure this is not sticking to the bottom or burning also. So to me, it looks a little thick. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. So I'm making adjustments as I go. Obviously, I can give you a recipe, but if you're not using the same exact things that I'm using, you might have to differentiate it a little bit. Maybe a little bit more water, less water, more seasoning, you know, up to your taste buds. Always taste your food when you're cooking. See where you're at with, with your flavors. And if you don't like it, don't be afraid to adjust. So we're going to give this a little stir again. This is more of the consistency that I was looking for, a little bit thinner. Okay. All right. High speed cooking right here. Soup, sandwich. This is looking good. I'm going to give this a flip. All right. That's beautiful. I'm going to give this a little press. Now you can see in the pan, the spinach is already wilting around it. So the cheese is melting. All of that heat, that residual heat is going to wilt the spinach. It's going to be nice and cooked by the time it comes out. So this has about another good minute on it. Okay. Now the soup, we're just about done with the soup, right? So I would say it takes a good 45 to 60 minutes at a low simmer. You just want to make sure that all those ingredients that were in there just got nice and soft and, and cooked off well. So uh, we're going to pull this off. Okay. I'm going to bring it over here. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this blender here, stick blender, a.k.a. the bolt motor. All right. I'm going to pop it in here. We're going to give this a blend. Okay. So we're going to be blending all of these ingredients that went in. We're going to have a nice creamy soup. Let me check this. We don't want this burning on us. After all that hard work we just put into it. Give it a flip, that's looking great. I'm gonna turn this off. Oh baby, look at that. Beautiful, nice colors. Okay, let's keep working. Here we go. I'm gonna taste this soup, see where we're at with our flavors. Got the big spoon, big spoon, big flavors. That tastes excellent. It's going to give a little bit more salt, a little bit more pop, salt and pepper. To bring those flavors out a little bit more. I can taste the chili flake. You've seen how much I put. It was a pinch, but you can feel it like in the back of your palate. It's great. It's not spicy, but you can tell it's there. So now that's pretty nice and smooth. What we're going to do, so I have about 
Like we said in the beginning, we have about four quarts of soup here. Um, I have a half a quart or a pint of heavy cream. We're going to add this in for flavor, consistency, give it that nice velvety texture, take away some of that acidity. Okay. The color is going to be beautiful on this. Nice light red kind of blush. This is looking great. At the restaurant, what we usually do after this is done, when we serve it to our customers, we usually put a little bit of creme fraiche or sour cream, a little bit of fresh basil or parsley on top to finish it off. You can get creative with that as well. You don't have to do it, but it's a nice touch. All right, this is looking good. That's looking nice. Okay. Okay, so let's plate some of this up. So we're gonna pour some of this soup into a bowl here. It's got a beautiful color, amazing smell. You see the color difference from when the fresh tomato was out of the can there. Compared to now, it has this really nice velvety texture to it. And hey, if you like a little bit more spice, pop it with a little bit more chili if you like. And a little bit of Parmesan goes nice on there as well. Now we're gonna cut up these sandwiches here. First the kids, because they're going nuts in the background, right? Let's get them fed. Doing little, little bite-sized sandwiches for them, okay? Cheese is nice and melted. And now for the adults, right down the middle, check this out. That's what you want. That's delicious, okay? Plate that up. So here we go. You have a nice tomato bisque going with some grilled cheese sandwiches for the kids, for yourself, for your friends. Try making this at home. I think that you'll love it. So on today's show, we made a delicious grilled cheese, two ways, one plain and simple for the kids, one a little bit kicked up for the adults. Pair that with a nice tomato soup. Hope you guys try to make this recipe at home. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Cooking with Mario. Thanks again for watching today, guys. If you like what you saw today on Cooking with Mario, go ahead and follow us, The Mitt TV, on YouTube. Click on the notification bell and subscribe. I hope to see you again soon on Cooking with Mario.